Year after year, the World Schools Debating Championship gathers the best debaters from around the globe. This year's pandemic made that impossible, so we took it online. In this style of debate, there are two teams, the proposition team, which is in favor of the motion, and the opposition team, which is against it. Each side features three speakers giving four speeches. The first two speakers generally present constructive argumentation. The Year after year, the World Schools Debating Championship gathers the best debaters from around the globe. This year's pandemic made that impossible, so we took it online. In this style of debate, there are two teams, the proposition team, which is in favor of the motion, and the opposition team, which is against it. Each side features three speakers giving four speeches. The first two speakers generally present constructive argumentation. The third primarily focuses on refutation while the reply speaker summarizes the debate. For the prepared rounds, teams research the motions for weeks in advance. For the impromptu rounds, teams have only one hour to prepare after being told the motion.
Hey, hey everyone. Welcome to the online WSDC 2020 award ceremony and closing ceremony. It's been a long few weeks. That's definitely true for the AGCOR and the ORCOM, but I'm sure it's been even longer for the coaches and the debaters who have had to be stressed out throughout all this time. But the good news is, or bad news, I guess, depending on your perspective, is it is finally over. So I think we, we understand that it's quite late for some people and we want to, we've all been at debate tournaments. We know what people want out of closing ceremonies. So I think we're going to keep this generally quite, uh, quite quick and efficient. We're, the way that this is going to work is we'll do the awards first and then the champion of course will be announced at the very end. And finally, uh, and then finally we will uh, have some closing words from the AGCOR, the ORCOM, and next year's uh, conveners and hosts, because we're very excited about WSDC in Macau 2021. Hopefully, finally, we can all see each other in, in person again. So without further ado, then, we are going to begin with the, uh, with the awards. Everyone can see this well, right? Let's just double check. Uh, can okay? Can we? Can someone just double check real quick that this looks good on the stream as well as uh, uh, for me? Um, we're, we're, cool. General, while we're waiting for this to start, just as a heads up, so the way this works is we have a, we have quite a few prizes to give out, right? We have best new we have the top five new nation speakers of each division. We have the top ten. EFL, ESL, and open speakers of each division. And then finally, we have to get, we have the best new nation of each division, best EFL and ESL countries of each division. Finally, we will recognize each team as they advance through each teams as they advance through the elimination rounds, recognizing their immense efforts to get there. And then at the very end is when the chair of the of the final will announce the results. So um, once I have a confirmation that the, that the stream looks good, I think we'll be ready. We can start announcing. Let me see if I can check it myself. Great. Oh, perfect. Great, great, great. Cool. All right. Starting with the Aztec division, the fifth best new nation speaker with an average of 68.87 speaker points across five debates is... Charity Apreku from Team Ghana. Congrats, Charity. I'm probably not going to clap throughout every single one because we have 80 plus people to get through, but I hope it's clear how excited and engaged we are about each person's individual efforts because all of these things are quite impressive. Fourth best, the fourth best new nation speaker of the Aztec division, average 68.88 points. Uh, average 68.88 points in four rounds. Though that speaker is Sharice Hall from Team Jamaica. Congrats, Sharice. The third best New Nation speaker with an average of 69 points over three over three speeches is Shaquille Ricketts, also from Team Jamaica. Good job, Team Jamaica, so far. <laughs> The now going to the top two of the best new nation speakers of the online WSDC 2020 in second place with an average of 69.12 speaker points over four rounds is Sebastian Maso from Team Colombia. Congratulations. Always happy to see the Latin American representation in the tournament. And finally, the best new nation speaker from the Aztec division, who averaged a total of 69.70 speaker points in five speeches, is from Team Brazil, Eduardo Vasconcelos. Congratulations. Immense efforts. We all understand how hard it is to not just debate, but debating and being a new nation for the first time. I think that's quite a difficult thing. WSDC is not a easy thing to immediately start out with. So we want to make sure that everyone recognizes these efforts, not just in the Aztec division, but now we move to the top five new nation speakers of the Maya division as well. So in the Maya division, in fifth place, with an average of 69.83 speaker points um, in three over three speeches, 
from Team Kazakhstan, it's Sagida Katkan Sagida Katkan Bayeva. Very sorry if I mess anyone everyone's name anyone's name up, but I'm gonna do my best to try and get them all all right. Congratulations, Sagida. In fourth place, uh with 69.88 speaker points across four debates. Also from Team Kazakhstan, it's Daniyar Baymagambedov. Congratulations, Daniyar. Finally, going into the top three of the new nation speakers of the Maya division, with 70.25 speaker points across four rounds, we have Anesu Mushonga from Team Namibia. Congratulations, Anesu. In second place, with 70.56 points across six debates, also from Team Namibia, we have, oh no, the person's name isn't here. Sorry, give me one second to fix that. Ah, very sorry, don't know what happened there. We'll fix that in a second. That the fifth per the second place speaker uh the second place speaker is abraham angula congratulations abraham sorry about the sorry about this we will make sure to it gets fixed then the finally the best new nation speaker with an average of 71.97 speaker points is also from team namibia christian prinsloo Congratulations, Christian. Congratulations, Team Namibia, for an outstanding showing with the top three speakers from the best new nations. Like I said, being a, a new nation is not an easy thing to do. These speakers didn't just go through the trials and tribulations of general WSDC, but doing it for the first time. That's something that's absolutely worth recognizing, and we'll also recognize the best new nations later on when we get to the team awards. Now, Moving on to the top 10 EFL speakers of each division. Once again, we'll start with the Aztec division. So the 10th best EFL speaker with 71.78 speaker points across six debates is Panagiotis Juvelis from Team Greece. Congratulations, Panos. In ninth place, with 71.89 speaker points across six rounds. It is Sarah Jesperson from Team Denmark. Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations, Team Denmark. Next, in eighth place, with 71.94 speaker points across three rounds this time, it is Emily Le Leah Damgard, also from Team Denmark. Congratulations, Emily. In seventh place, with 72.04 speaker points across four rounds, we have Rivka Roos from Team Netherlands. Congratulations, Rivka. In sixth place, with 72.13 speaker points across five rounds, we have My Brits Henkel, also from Team Denmark. Congratulations. Congratulations, my Brit. Congratulations, Team Denmark. Now for the top five ESL, EFL speakers. In fifth place, with 72.17 speaker points across four rounds, we have Valeriu Stefan Carousel from Team Romania. Congratulations, Valeriu. In fourth place, with 72 point 22 speaker points this time as you can tell a lot of these speaker rankings are quite tight this is a very competitive across all divisions um in fourth place we have hagar asaf from team israel congratulations hagar in third place entering the top three with 72.30 speaker points across five debates we have Ode Nardelli from Team Germany. Congratulations, Ode. Now, the top two with 72.56 speaker points across all six prelim debates, we have Elian Lavrizen from Team Netherlands. Congratulations, Elian. And finally, the best EFL speaker across all Aztec division teams 
with 72.89 speaker points across all six debates is Marilena Hajikosta from Team Greece. Congratulations, Marilena, and congratulations to all to all top 10 EFL speakers from the Aztec division. Now, as you might have guessed, now onto the top 10 of the Maya division. So, in 10th place, with 70.88 speaker points across four rounds, we have Joanna Grabowska from Team Poland. Congratulations, Joanna. In ninth place, with 71.04 points across four rounds, we have Kana Kanzaki from Team Japan. Congratulations, Kana. In eighth place, with 71.6 speaker points across three debates, we have Patricia Karba Visiute, Team Lithuania. Congratulations, Patricia. Ludas, don't kill me if I pronounce the names wrong. Eastern European names are probably the hardest, or Central slash Eastern European names are probably the toughest for me. All right, seventh best speaker now. With 71.11 speaker points across three debates, we have Gitis Gracius, also from Team Lithuania. Congrats, Gitis. Congrats, Lithuania. In sixth place now, also in sixth place now, also with, with 71 points, 11 speaker points across three rounds, we have Lipa Seskevisute, also from Team Lithuania. Congrats, Lipa. Congrats, uh, congrats, Team Lithuania. The fifth best ES EFL speaker with 71.38 speaker points across four debates is. Aftahi bin Khalid from Team Bangladesh. Congrats, Aftahi. In fourth place, with 71.39 speaker points across three debates, we have Tuan Khun Ha from Team Vietnam. Congratulations. In now entering the top three of the EFL Maya, uh, Maya division, we have, with 71.44 speaker points in th across three rounds, we have Ayaka Sugimoto from Team Japan. Congrats, Ayaka. The second best EFL speaker with 71.56 speaker points across three rounds is Ahmad Tusivyami from Team Bangladesh. Congrats, Ahmad. And now... The very last, the very last speaker, the best EFL speaker from the Maya division is with 71.6 speaker points. 1.56 speaker points. Uh, so, okay, sorry about that. Uh, um, the 70, with 71.6 speaker points across four rounds, it's... Rina Kajitani, also from Team Japan. Congratulations, Rina. Congrats, congratulations to the top 10 speakers for a really outstanding performance across the, uh, across the board. Um, okay, and now is... Apparently there's... Yeah, I'd, sorry. I'd, apparently, there is audio coming from me, but I, I don't think that is the case. I, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, and now, moving on to the top ten ESL speakers. Of we'll start with the Aztec division. So, in tenth place, with seventy-one point twenty-eight speaker points across six rounds. This is uh, an award that I'm pretty happy to be able to be doing the announcing. It is Manuel Machorro from Team Mexico. Congrats, Manny. In the ninth best ESL speaker from Team, uh, the ninth best ESL speaker from the Aztec division with 71.33 speaker points across three rounds, it's Tierai Tool from Team Armenia. Congratulations, Tierai. The eighth best ESL speaker 
with 71.40 speaker points across five rounds. It's Emma Zagar from Team Slovenia. Congratulations, Emma. Next, the seventh best ESL speaker from the Aztec division with 71.40 speaker points across five rounds. It's Alejandra Maria Gomberg Skolnikova, also from Team Mexico, another award that is very meaningful for me to present. Congrats, Maria, on being the seventh best ESL speaker. Now, sixth best ESL speaker, 71.5 speaker points across six rounds. It's Simon Picard from Team Slovakia. Congratulations, Simon or Simon. Yes, it can depend, depending on your pronunciation. Now for the top five ESL. The fifth best ESL speaker with 71.61 speaker points across all six preliminary debates is Mariana Casa, also from Team Mexico. Congrats, Mariana. Very glad I got to do this with these ones. The fourth best speaker from the ESL division in the Aztec, from the ESL, uh, ESL speaker from the Aztec division, now with 72.06 speaker points across three rounds, it's Dimitra Georgantaki. Congratulations, Dimitra. In third place of the, of the ESL with 72.36 speaker points in six rounds, it is Matevs Remantasic, also from Team Slovenia. Congratulations, Matevs. In second place, with 72.44 speaker points across six rounds, it is Lucas Houston from Team Netherlands. Congratulations, Lucas. And now, the best ESL speaker from the Aztec division with a 72.44 speaker point average across all six debates. It is Jane Napatsunamai from Team Wales. Congratulations, Jane. So that is ESL for the Aztec division. Onwards we go with the top 10 ESL speakers of the ES of the Maya division. We had so we had a tie. The act we had a tie here in ninth, and actually it got a little bit complicated for a second. Uh, but I'll get to the slight complication a few speakers later. So we had a two-way tie for ninth place. So the first speaker with set an average of seventy-two point five speaker points across all six rounds. It is Saranya Ravindran from Team India. Congratulations, Saranya. The other debater tied for ninth best uh, ESL speaker with 72.5 speaker points. It is Jacqueline Lin from Team China. Congratulations, Jacqueline. So the weird situation now comes into play with who the eighth best ESL speaker was because at first Tabby Cat made it seem as if there wasn't, made it seem that there wasn't a tie, even though everyone had an exactly an average of 72.5. Upon deeper investigation, we realized that there was a difference of 0 0.02 between the speakers who had tied and the speaker who was next. So the eighth best speaker with an average of 72.502 <laughs> speaker points over five rounds is Fej Malu from Team India. Congratulations, Fej. Now, the seventh best speaker our seventh best ESL speaker of the Maya division with 72.53 speaker points across six rounds is Shalem Sumantiran from Team Sri Lanka. Congratulations, Shalem. The fifth bet, the, the, the next best speaker, ESL speaker with 72.56 speaker points across three rounds is Rafai Tabasum from Team Pakistan. Congratulations, Rafai. Now, the fifth best ESL speaker with 72.64 speaker points across six rounds is Judah Christopher Purwantu from Team Indonesia. Congrats, Judah. Sorry that we apologize if we're moving quite quickly, but as you can see, we have a lot of names that we have to get through. 
Um, we'll post this presentation as well. So everyone, if, want, if they want, can take screenshots with their own names and post it on Facebook or, or wherever, but we can't take that long with each name. Now, the fourth best ESL speaker from the Maya division with 72.79 speaker points across four rounds is Kirtana Batula from, from Team Philippines. Congratulations, Kirtana. The, so moving into the top three now, the third best ESL speaker in the Maya division with 72.83 speaker points across three rounds is Lee Ejin from Team Malaysia. Congrats, Lee. The second place ESL speaker with 73 speaker points averaged for over four rounds is also from Team Malaysia, Jonathan Chin Wei. Congratulations, Jonathan, and congratulations, Team Malaysia. And now for the final ESL speaker of online WSDC 2020, the best ESL speaker of the Maya division with 73.03 speaker points across six rounds is Ananya Ganesh from Team India. Congratulations, Ananya. And congratulations to all speakers, all ESL speakers. With that, we finally get to the top 10 open speakers from each division. So once again, starting with the Aztec division, the 10th best, uh, whoops, that should say open, the 10th best open speaker with 72.78 points in three rounds is, uh, there we go, 72.78 points in three rounds is, Janya Kaur from Team South Africa. Congratulations, Janya. In ninth place, the, with the ninth best open speaker with 72.89 speaker points across three rounds, it is Marilena Hajikosta from Team Greece. Congratulations, Marilena. The eighth best open speaker with 72.94 speaker points this time, it is Rihanna Yan from Team Canada. Congratulations, Rihanna. The seventh best spe open speaker. Ah, uh, the speaker points are, let me adjust. Actually, this is slightly incorrect. Give me one second. The, so the eighth best, the seventh best speaker from, uh, from the Aztec, with an average of 72.96 speaker points is Joseph Zelazniak from Team South Africa. Congratulations, Joseph. The sixth best open speaker with an average of 73.12 speaker points across four rounds, it is Max Rosen from Team Canada. Congratulations, Max. Pretty good day for, uh, pretty good day for Max so far and Team Canada. Fifth best speaker, 73.25 speaker points with four across four rounds. Also from Team Canada, it's Angela Lee. Congratulations, Angela. The fourth best speaker from the, the fourth best speaker from the Aztec division with 73.31 speaker points this time, it is Matthew Mallon from Team Ireland. Congratulations, Matthew. The third best open speaker with 73.33 speaker points across four rounds. It is another Matthew. This time, Matthew Anzaruth. Congratulations, Matthew. Another Team Canada speaker as well. Congratulations. Finally, the top two speakers so far of the top two speakers of the open of the open category of Aztec in second place with 73.44 speaker points across three rounds. It is Joe Atkinson from Team England. Congrats, Joe. And now for the overall best speaker of of online WSDC 2020 online in the Aztec division with 73.67 speaker points averaged across four rounds. 
From Team South Africa, it is Ivan Buckland. Congratulations, Ivan, and congratulations to all speakers. Very impressive showing from all teams, multiple team speakers from the same teams in the top 10. Great job to everyone, but we'll honor teams a little bit later. Now, you're very nearly at the end of the speaker awards. Now, moving on to the top 10 open speakers from the Maya division. So, the 10th best open speaker in the Maya division with 72.64 points across six rounds, it is Judah Christopher Perwantu from, from Team Indonesia. In ninth, the ninth best speaker with 72.71 speaker points across four rounds, it is David Bloom from Team Philippines. Congratulations, David. The eighth best open speaker with 72.79 points in four rounds, it is Kirtana Batula from Team Philippines. Congratulations, Kirtana. Always nice to see some ESL speakers in the top 10 of, of open as well. The next best speaker with 72.83 speaker points across three rounds is Lee E. Jen from Team Malaysia. Congratulations, Lee. The sixth best open. So this is another situation where Tabby, where we had to go to the decimals to break the, we had to go to further decimals to break the tie um, because for some reason Tabby Cat had both listed as 72.7, 2.97, even though it had them not tied in terms of actual speaks. So with the detailed average of 72.966 speaker points across five rounds, we have Daniel Sharamata from Team Hong Kong. Congratulations, Daniel. The, four, the fifth best speaker with 72.971 speaker points across five rounds is Bharat Anantam from Team Singapore. Congrats, Bharat. Now, the top four speakers. The fourth best speaker with a straight average of, uh, uh, no, of 73 points in four rounds is Jonathan Chinway from Team Malaysia. Congratulations, Jonathan. Now for the top three speaker awards with 73.03 speaker points. And you can see how smut razor thin all of these margins are with 73.03 speaker points across six rounds. The third best open speaker of the Maya division is Ananya Ganesh from Team India. Congrats, Ananya. And now the top two. Second best open speaker of the Maya division with 73.06 speaker points is Gareth Lim Yefeng from Team Singapore. Congrats, Gareth. And now the Final best the final speaker award and the overall best speaker of the Maya division. They had 73.11 speaker points across all six debates. So we know this person debated quite consistently at the top level across the entire tournament. The best open speaker of, on, of the Maya division of online WSDC 2020 is... Jenna Hong from Team Hong Kong. Congratulations, Jenna, and congratulations to all the top 10 speakers. We had some really amazing performances here. We've had across all the speaker awards. We'll make sure that this is published all later today. Congratulations to all the individual speakers. Now we're going to go to the team awards. Starting with the best new nation. So the way that really quickly, actually, the way the best team awards are designated is it is the best team. The team has the best performance under that designation. So in this case, we have three designations. Firstly, the best new nation. Secondly, the best EFL nation. Thirdly, the best ESL nation. If the teams advanced to the elimination rounds, it was the team that advanced, advanced furthest into the rounds that would win that award. If teams tied upon which round they went to, the tiebreaker went to the highest seed, the highest seeded team um, that lost in that round. If, the, if no team in that category made the elimination round, then it's just whichever team was the highest seeded team in pre, after all six preliminary.
Sorry, I don't. Someone just muted me. Scott, whoever's in this call that keeps muting me, please stop muting me. <laughs> okay. Uh, fun. All right. Now, for the best U Nation of the Aztec Division, having won three, having won three debates, we have Team Brazil. Congratulations, Team Brazil. Awesome performance. Also very happy that it's a team from Latin America. For the Maya division, the best new nation is, with three wins as well, Team Namibia. Congratulations. Awesome performances from both teams. Now, for the best EFL nation of the Aztec division, we have... Team Romania, who made it all the way to the octafinals. Congratulations, Team Romania. For the best EFL nation of the Maya division, we have Team Japan. Congratulations, Team Japan. Awesome performances. And you can even see these performances reflected in the speaker awards. Now, for the last two country awards, we have best ESL nation from the Aztec division. This, this goes to Team Netherlands. Congratulations, Team Netherlands, who made it all the way to, who also made it to the octafinals. And finally, the best ESL nation from the Maya division. Since you can figure out that this is based on how far a team went, it's probably pretty easy to figure out which is the best ESL nation from the Maya division. It is... Team Sri Lanka, congratulations, Team Sri Lanka. Good days for both finalists. It's about to get better for one of them because we're about we're getting very close to announcing the final results. Congratulations to all speakers, though, and to all teams. Honestly, any performance of this this, as you all know, this tournament's not easy. This tournament takes weeks, if not months, of preparation. It has the highest speakers. Any success, any performance in this is worth honoring. Even if you weren't a top 10 speaker, it's still something worth recognizing, but it is also worth recognizing the people who are at the very, very top. And so that's what this is for. Very quickly before, because now the panel is here and the chair is ready, there's only one small series of announcements left that we have to do, which is honoring and recognizing the teams as they made it through the elimination rounds. So in turn, oh, whoops. Starting with the teams that made it to the PDOs, congratulations to Team New Zealand, Team Scotland, Team UAE, and Team India, along with Team Greece, Team Wales, Team Indonesia, and Team Philippines. It is, especially in this format, it was even harder to break. Getting to the PDOs themselves is a huge achievement. Making it to the octafinals, we have another eight teams. These teams were Team Romania, Team England, Team South Africa, Team China, Team Pakistan, Team Netherlands, Team USA, and Team Slovenia. Congratulations to our eight octa finalists as well. Then we have our four quarter finalists. We have Team Hong Kong, Team Israel, Team Taiwan, Team Malaysia, who all performed incredibly admir admirably as well and had some excellent, excellent rounds. These were finally the first few rounds I got to watch. And so speaking personally, having seen most a lot of these rounds, truly outstanding debates from both teams. Now, finally, the last two teams to recognize were our two semifinalists, Team Ireland and Team Singapore, for really incredible performances to make it as far as they, as far as they did. Now, the grand for the grand final, to announce the champion and the results, I'd like to invite Varshini to announce the decision. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can all focus on you, no pressure. Um, okay, hi everyone. And um, just in a bit of departure from tradition, just as a lot of this tournament has been, I'm going to announce uh, who won first and then go through, uh, go through the reasons. Uh, on an 8-1 split decision in what was a high quality uh, and close round for all the judges, uh, Team Opposition, Team Canada uh, won the final. Uh, so I'm just going to take a quick moment for them to do their, well, all of us do our virtual applause, them to do a couple of hugs if they're around each other, a uh, bit of jumping and high fives. 
Um, commiserations to Team Sri Lanka. We thought you were excellent as well. Uh, and very quickly, sorry, it looks, okay, yeah, I'm good. Uh, okay, so very quickly, I'm going to go through uh, why we saw the debate the way that we did. Uh, the first thing to note is that all the adjudicators on the panel agreed that we saw some interesting and distinct and great styles from all the speakers, uh, unsurprisingly and deserving of a grand final. Uh, in particular, we thought the two teams had very distinct styles in that we thought uh, one of the teams had much more emotive style, uh, whilst we thought the other team uh, did have style that was seen as more uh, calm and systematic in some ways. And we thought both teams uh, were incredible stylistically and showed a diverse range of styles that we really enjoyed listening to. Uh, second, on strategy, uh, there are three points to note uh, from the adjudicators. Uh, for the side of a proposition and then a point of divergence that, from the minority that I will go through as well for the side of opposition. Uh, first, uh, there was an opinion from the majority of the panel that proposition did not have as clear a path to victory that they had set out for themselves uh, compared to the team of opposition in that they did not pick up a particular issue or at least a set of issues that they were clear that they were winning on and sort of weighed those issues or impacted those issues out clearly uh, through the rest of the debate. An example being the kinds of relationships that you build with your family when you have time with your family right now rather than later. Uh, second, we thought that proposition at times was a little less responsive than we'd have liked to the strongest characterization coming from opposition. And as an example, uh, to the idea that there was financial stress induced, not because you were living paycheck to paycheck, but because you still had large expenses that were important expenses, things like health insurance or college debt that you might have to worry about. Third, we finally thought that uh, we would have liked a clearer picture from proposition on what your passion job looked like, because there were some members in the majority that felt like we often got conflicting characterizations. One of the idea that you might be an artist working out of your garage, in which case it strengthened team opposition's ideas of financial stress. Uh, but second, uh, there was this idea that it could in fact be you trying to climb your way up to being a sous chef, in which case there wasn't a clear enough way up on why you have less of pressure than someone who is an investment banker uh, climbing to the top of their profession. On the other hand, uh, we did have a minority of the panel who believed that the characterization that came from proposition, that these, these were still financially stable jobs that you can be in, uh, that actually your passions are not fleeting or at least not as fleeting as potentially your need to make money at when you're very young uh, and that you can actually stay for a longer time in your passion and find that you can stick around in your passion and gain happiness from it was characterization that was held down the bench and clear and characterization that they felt was a little less responded to from opposition and gave team proposition a strategic advantage. So that, that was broadly the distinctions that were pointed out uh, through our discussion in strategy for both teams. Um, in terms of content, there are two broad issues to go over. Uh, the first one being, what is the impact on your quality of life? Under this, number one, stress within your work. I think all members on the panel agreed that to some extent, the corporate jobs that you are in are much more stressful. Um, it was. The, it was then a question of to what extent the members on the panel feel that this was mitigated. So a majority of the panel felt like there were two things that mitigated this, uh, the extent of stress that proposition uh, was claiming existed uh, by through the comparative on what happens when you are in a job that you're passionate about. First, the idea that your passions could change and could be fleeting meant that even if you were happy in your job that you were passionate about, that this happiness doesn't necessarily last long. Uh, but second, also the idea that if you were fighting to get to the top in a job that you were passionate about, uh, added to the fact that if it was lower skill than a job that you are extremely, well, in a, in a job that's a corporate law job, say, uh, that in fact, you will have the same stresses that you, you would otherwise to climb to the top, uh, even if it's just marginally lesser, that it is mitigated to some extent, the extent of the stress. Obviously, a minority of the panel felt like it was pretty clear by the end of the debate that you are much more likely to dislike your job and feel burnout uh, in a job that is a high stress kind of corporate job. Uh, and that was uh, the difference in that in that circumstance. So a majority of the panel felt like the dis difference in stress was not a deciding point for the debate. 
But how does that then weigh up to the stress you have outside your work? So from proposition, we got this idea that there is financial stress that you have. Uh, and from opposition, sorry, from proposition, we get the idea that you have stresses from making money. Whereas from opposition, we got the idea that you have financial stresses. So for two reasons, we bought opposition's characterization. Uh, first, that it was uncomparative that necessarily uh, having the financial stresses that opposition talked about wouldn't come with some of the same stresses on how to invest uh, that proposition talked about when you're making money. But second, we also bought from opposition the idea that there is a ceiling even when you make money because comparatively you make less money in a job uh, that is a job that you are passionate about. And when you look at that in terms or in the context of the kinds of things that you have to pay for, which they to some extent said wasn't paycheck to paycheck, but still important expenses, that the idea that you was quite stressed outside your work, uh, but also that the stress is not localized uh, in your job stood for a majority of the panel. Uh, however, a minority of the panel did feel like a proposition was convincing and convincing showing that there was more financial stability and this wasn't a paycheck to paycheck circumstance. So yes, they might cut down on some other expenses, so say like buying your second yacht or being incredibly consumerist, so they would opt out of that, uh, but that they would still have the ability uh, to make a majority of their payments. Uh, and that's how the majority and minority differed on this particular issue. Uh, third, there was this idea that if you happen to lose everything, uh, you still have memories to hold on to. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case with money. So we did towards the very end feel like we did get a response to that in terms of the, in terms of the fact that if there are fluctuations, that you are still likely to have uh, some money that can act as a backup. Uh, but we also didn't think necessarily that proposition explained to us why this was the most important thing or why this should be one of the more important things uh, in weighing up who uh, in weighing up and deciding who wins the debate. Finally, in the idea of um, what is the impact on your quality of life is time with your family. So a majority of the panel felt like while we can see that there might be a little bit more time that you get with your family right now, um, we disagreed that what you necessarily do with that time, if you didn't have the ability to say take them on a vacation, uh, was qualitatively uh, a, a lot better than in the world where you had lesser time, but you could do things like take them on a vacation or do things that they really wanted to do with money. Uh, second, we thought that you could get this kind of time anyway, because we bought the idea that you can retire early and spend that time with your family. We did acknowledge that proposition had the idea of a defining decade, but we were unclear why that defining decade meant that these were irreversible or that these relationships could not be built at a later point. However, a minority of the panel did in fact feel like a retirement is actually quite late for you to be able to build those relationships and actually getting more time in the now was quite important and therefore gave that issue uh, to team proposition. Finally, we had a another clash on the impact on your passions itself. So we did get this idea from the opposition that you are likely to lose your passion if you were tied to deadlines, uh, beholden by your boss. Um, we bought from proposition that you might in fact be passionate about serving people through doing that as a job. So we didn't necessarily think uh, that this went to either team. However, what we did get from opposition that we thought mitigated a lot of proposition's concerns were that you would have the money and time later on to pursue your passion anyway. Uh, and we didn't think that was something that we necessarily got a response from proposition on as this has evolved down the bench for opposition. Uh, we finally got this idea on skill development, which we thought um, was similar in nature in terms of freeing up time and having the resources to do this. And hence, we did think that opposition's overall response on pursuing your passions later on when you had the money to do so uh, stood in the face of that as well. So that's broadly why we thought opposition uh, won the debate and how the minority differed from the majority viewpoint. And I was so excited to judge this debate, uh, as were all the judges on the panel. Uh, thanks to both teams. And also, if I can just take a quick moment to thank the judges uh, who judged all the way up to the grand final, but also all the other judges who took out an incredible amount of time to give kids feedback uh, from what I know might be really difficult schedules, but also really a really difficult time given the COVID circumstances. So yeah, a huge thanks from the CAP for that. Great, thank you so much, Varshini, for explaining the decision and announcing it. Congratulations to Team Canada, of course, after 
some finals losses in the past few years. Amazing, uh, amazing performance to come back and win it. Amazing performance from Team Sri Lanka as well. I think it's they're only the third or fourth ESL team to ever even make the finals. So already this just shows both the incredible growth that has come from the general WSDC community. And I'm sure it won't be long before we see Sri Lanka in the finals again and winning it, maybe following in Canada's footsteps of we'll lose one year, the next year come back and take the whole thing. Um, so with that, that ends the award section of this of the ceremony. Um, we'd ask that you please stick around though, because we do have a few last uh, closing words we want to impart with. I promise we won't take long, but these are important things, recognitions, announcements that we want to make. The first person that we'd like to invite to come and speak is our is Lok. Lok Fat, who's one of the conveners from Macau WSDC 2021, as well as being the convener of the Maya division. We could not have organized this tournament without Lok, without George, Benjamin, Vat, uh, uh, the whole team. So I, on behalf of the Oricom, and I think I can speak for generally the whole WSDC community, thank you so much for willing to take time for a schedule that already wasn't exactly what worked for a lot of you in the first place and making that sacrifice to make it all worthwhile. This, we appreciate everything you've done and we're sure Macau WSDC is gonna be even better and set a new record, but I will, I will leave the floor to you, Luke. Uh, might as well speak now. Uh, is it's nearly 12 o'clock in Singapore now, and uh, I'd like to congratulate Canada and um, also Sri Lanka and everybody on the CAP, all the judges, all the debaters. Uh, I'm going to keep it short. Next year, uh, July, if it's possible, we will host the uh, in-person Macau World School Debating Championship in 2021. If it's not possible due to the <clears throat> pandemic, we will host a online version. Uh, it will be similar to this year, but not exactly the same. As you know, I, I'm one of those who uh, didn't like the long, long time, uh, the, the, the length of the, of the event. If there are any coaches listening, um, this is the heads up. It will not be this long. And um, so that's, that's it. I'm not going to say any more because uh, Joseph Park is there trying to curb my um, um, unruly mouth and uh, so we welcome all of you to come to Macau either in person if it's possible or virtually online uh, next July and um, we will give you further updates after uh, Macau uh, after Mexico has given you, you their uh, updates about uh, what they're going to do so um, we welcome you with all open arms and um, on behalf of the, the two chief adjudicators, uh, Professor Joseph Park and Harish Nataraja. Um, we, we would like you to come along and make it even a bigger tournament than the, the one in Mexico. And, um, and we'd like all the CAP to come back again and uh, do great things. It may not be on the CAP because it's a thanks, thankless job, right? I, you know that, right? But the, do come and join us to judge and uh, to to be nice to the kids and or not so or not be so nice to the kids. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lok. We look for, we really look forward uh, to the tournament next year. All right, and now with that, we'll we invite the Adge Court to say a few words on their behalf at the closing of the of the tournament. Thanks, Julio. Uh, I want to start by saying thank you to a long list of people uh, because this tournament, especially at such short notice, I think has gone remarkably well. And there's a lot of work, some of which is very visible to you guys and some of it is a bit less visible. But we as CAP members have had the pleasure of working with everyone behind the scenes uh, and we want to really acknowledge these people. So um, I want to start by saying thank you to all the coaches and team managers and members of the community who helped us work with new nations, who helped provide feedback on our surveys, about what to focus on. Some of this stuff was done back when we thought that World Schools was going to be done in person, but all of that input was very quickly turned around and used to make this set of briefing slides and this competition uh, as good as we could. Um, and, and so huge thanks to all of those members of the community who gave us their thoughts and, and what the community needed to go forward. 
Uh, also want to say thank you to all the previous CAP members who shared their material with us so we could build on their past work rather than st uh, start from, from ground zero. Uh, a lot of the slides, um, materials that they shared really helped us accelerate the process. And you know, I, I think we're going to be quite shameless in admitting that we borrowed and stole wherever we could, but that helped us focus on the things we needed to uh, take briefings, and judge training and testing uh, to the next step, stage. I want to say thank you to all the judges as well. Uh, some of you might be here listening, some of you might not be. I hope that wherever you are, you know how grateful the community is to get such a pool of people who are invested in the development of young debaters who are willing to give their time and to stay up and, and to navigate the time zones. Um, it can be quite confusing and messy. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I want to say thank you to our two safeguarding and de facto equity officers, Tracy Lee and Andrew Fitch, who had to deal with all the challenges that come with an online setting. A lot of these challenges are quite new and are quite unusual, but I thought they were extremely uh, efficient in dealing with things, but also great communicators, just really reasonable, a joy to work with. Uh, and, and thankfully, you know, we didn't get called, called out, called out uh, for making any mistakes as well. Uh, I'd like to thank the broader cap. So uh, in one division, we had Josh Park, Amira, Paul, and Varshney. The other division, we had Luke Churchyard and Vale. But also the efforts of Sebastian and Richard Diaz, Sebastian Dasso and Richard Diaz, who, while they weren't on the cap this year, uh, in this particular incarnation of the tournament, have done some great work in preparation for the live event in Mexico, uh, which again is a bit invisible, but definitely important to remember their contributions. So thanks very much, guys. And finally, Anytime you run an online event where you're not able to be in the same place, pulling things together, an orcom is really important to making that happen. And we've had the luxury of working with two fantastic orcoms. In one division, we had Mr. Loke, BAT, George Chen, on the other side, a huge team here, and I can't mention everyone, but Julio, Monse, and Sergio have really uh, led the efforts there. Uh, literally, without their willingness to be on time, to put material out there, to think about what you need as a participant, none of this would have happened. And so thank you very much to both teams for stepping up and helping create a WSDC event in a year where strange and turbulent things have meant that we can't meet together in the same place. But through their efforts, it really does feel like we're all sharing a large part of this summer and a large part of this moment together. So thank you to all these groups. And I'll now hand the time to Sharms to talk a bit more about wrapping up. Yeah, so <clears throat> I echo everything Tex said um, in thanking everyone who made this possible. Um, while we are a bit sad about not having welcomed you in Mexico and seen everyone, uh, we are still really happy that we managed to make this online event happen. Um, and you know, it's also become clear to us that while an online event is quite challenging in some ways, like we had to coordinate across the C across six different time zones with the within the CAP and with organizing committees in two different time zones as well. Um, it also did present us with new opportunities. So first, I think this tournament was a lot more accessible. So we've had new nations participate that otherwise would not have been able to attend. And for that, we are really happy. Um, second, we've also had a larger pool of judges. So some of whom would not have been around in a live tournament, right? And this was a happy problem for us. Um, in some cases, in many cases, actually, we had more judges than required for the round. And so it was quite, we've had to make some really difficult decisions around that as well. Um, so I think um, what this experience as a community shows us is that some of the benefits of doing things online can be leveraged further. Um, and perhaps these are things we could be looking at more closely in the next months. So for example, we've realized there's a lot of space to develop um, training resources and provide support to new coaches and judges or to run a year long judge training program perhaps. Um, and to that end, we are preparing a detailed uh, CA report. Uh, we document the processes we followed in recruiting applicants and selecting our CAP, in setting motions, which the, C the CAP handled for this tournament, in recruiting and ranking judges, um, and engaging with the community to identify the issues to focus on in our briefings. And of course, we will include in our, you know, we will include in this report our reflections on the strengths and limitations of the approaches we took and the spaces for growth and improvement as well. So we look forward to sharing that with you in the next week, I think, Tex. Um, so thank you very much again, everyone. Um, and take care, see you online, hopefully see you in person sooner rather than later. Well, thank, thank you so much, Charms and Tex, for your lovely words. Um, 
just want to say a few quick things to close things out. I think the global debate community hasn't heard enough of me speaking for a lifetime at this point, so I will keep this relatively short. Um, but I do think there are some important things that need to be said. Um, one, I think just echoing the last things Sharmila was talking about, especially in terms of accessibility, I think this tournament showed a lot of the positives and benefits of doing things online. Want to give a brief shout out to the online training platform in Spanish that we that we're concurrently organizing. On if any of you speak Spanish, you can check out the the AMD's Facebook page, where we're going to have a final debate later today uh, as an exhibition, along with a few training things. Because one of the things that we've seen is that, especially in terms of language accessibility, that tends to be something that's not always as. I mean, not only does in-person accessibility matter, but language accessibility matters as well. And so we do want to challenge people to not, uh, challenge people to help make more materials available online, help make more videos online. We'll talk to coaches about the videos. We're so happy that we were able to record more than 50 debates across the entirety of this tournament, which I'm pretty sure is by, is a fairly significant portion larger than almost any other WSDC before. Hopefully we can use those as training materials, everything else. So we want, we hope that this helps create an impulse of that because there are so many new nations. I mean, the truth is, even with 67 countries participating, that's still, what, a third of the world? This still is not even close to being as fully representative or as global as it could be. And so I think if we can challenge, if we can get that happening, that would be amazing. We hope that this helps push things forward in a more global, accessible way. Let's definitely still have in-person WSDC. Macau is going to be amazing, but let's not just leave those efforts there. Let's do things that don't just benefit the fun, but also benefit the educational and accessibility sides of this debate. Hopefully this tournament was a positive first step uh, towards that. Secondly, this tournament could not have been possible with so many people. If anything, like, please stop congratulating or thanking me, please reach out to all the other people instead. Because if anything, they were the most vital parts of this tournament tournament happening and occurring. The first group to add to thank is the AGCORE. Um, I mean, I said it before, we could not have asked for a better group of people to work with. And so responsible, great, awesome efforts also just like lovely and nice people to work with. Like I feel, I count myself fortunate that I think I'm friends with all of the people on the Edge Core. And for me, that was something really special getting to do this with a group of people with close friends. We've been through a lot. I was with Tex and Charms in a meeting when my phone got stolen in London halfway through. So we really have gone through a whole range of emotions and experiences together from the lows of having to go randomly call the police and figure that out to the highs of completing a tournament after several weeks and months of effort. So I think it's I just want to say thank you to them for being a part of this and being able to do something so special and cool together. Secondly, I've said that I'm going to name, I was, I've pulled, I've held off on naming the Orcom members because there are a fair amount of them to name. Now has to be the moment because they are really the key towards having made all of this happen. In case any of you didn't notice, most of the out rounds, for example, happened from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Mexico time. So most of our team had to completely flip their split sleep schedules in order to make these rounds work. And for those efforts, I am internally in debt to these, to these people. So just want to say huge thank yous to in alphabetical order. At least that's how I have it on my WhatsApp. Uh, firstly, Alfonso Mead, who been friends with for a while. Thank you, Alfonso. Secondly, our digital director, Beto Amor. Beto is the one who every day improved things, got things running more efficiently, did an amazing job running the Zoom rooms. Itzel, who was our general logistics director and helped run things and did an amazing job as well. We had some new additions. Alfonso was one of our new additions. Rafaela Mesquita was another new addition that really stepped up and helped things out halfway through. We have Valeria Corona, who's, I think it was her, it was her amongst others. She may have been the lead impulser of the music and the fun and the vibe along with all her, the actual logistic, the hard logistical efforts. So thank you, Valeria. Another late addition we had was Edre. Thank you, Edre, for stepping up. Similarly with Alfonso, 
with Alfonso and Rafael. We have Axel Piña who helped do a lot of our streaming and helps help teach us how to use OBS and do a lot of these things. It was really his technical knowledge that helped out in so many ways. Daniel Espinosa, another key member of the ORCOM that stepped in later, helped us out and just added generally a bunch of joy and help uh, towards making this tournament happen. We had Germán and Germán Soto and Aketza, who stayed up with me until like 4 a.m. during the prelims as well to help us stream the rounds. I think they did an amazing job just having the fortitude to be able to do that and then still be of help in the mornings. So thank you to Germán and Ake. That is generally the logistics team, but there is also the communications team who did a lot of amazing, amazing work for us as well, who I want to thank as well. So we also had, we had Cesar Rivas, who's been helping us out for a while now, and then at one point got dengue before the tournament started and still pulled through, was recovered and was able to help us out. So way to go, way to go Cesar. We also had Chris Carrasco, who was one of the directors as well, really helping lead us and organize things. Huge shout out, not just to Chris, but to her, organ her debate organization, Ocasio, that had numerous members of its organization helping us out, working in coordination with the AMD to be able to launch this. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ocasio. We had Salma, who did so much of the design work. Salma, people love the designs. You did an awesome effort. Thank you. We also had Shannon and David Camaño and Selene, who really stepped, again, people who stepped in when it seemed like we needed more people, immediately were like, yes, I'll do it. I'll hop out. This sounds fun. Never complained about the hours. Uh, never complained about the hours. Um, yeah, Selene, Selene was part of that as well. Um, Selene, Shannon, and, and David Camaño, who really stepped up. Um, so thank you to them as well. There's just really two... There's. Actually, no, there's, there's four more people left, oh, almost done. Our two tab directors on the Aztec side of things, Yosta and Baruch, uh, we really need more tab people in Mexico so that it's not just the same two people having to do everything, but at the same time, we are so grateful that in spite of doing everything, they were still willing to make time in their schedules, make the efforts to be able to help us out. You guys are awesome. I will work with you guys a lot. I love you guys. This was a ton of fun to do it with you. And then finally, Sergio and Monse, we have been through so much over the past few years, if not just months. Like it is exhausting. It is difficult to not just WSDC, but really everything. You know, there's so much more we can be doing. There's so much more we are going to be doing. The AMD is not a perfect organization and I don't think any of us would say it as such, but I think we are doing a lot of things that are helping increase things there's gonna be a lot of long years left of work. I don't think anyone's satisfied with where we are at, but I could not be happier with the group of people that we've brought together to be able to do this work. And I think with the efforts that we've put in, there's so much left to do, organize. We've done WUDC, we've done WSDC. Let's organize the Spanish version of WSDC now. And who knows, maybe some of the two might as well knock out all the big internationals. We seem to hate ourselves enough to do it. So might as well try it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Also, just probably worth mentioning, thank you to the AMD board, Mark Weber, Ariel de la Garza, Rodolfo. You guys are always supportive of us. You are always friends. Thank you for all your help in making this happen and helping the AMD be where it is today. I think that generally covers all the, all the people that are worth thanking in this. It has been such a long few weeks and months, but I'm very happy with how it came out. I'm so happy that we had a team like... Uh, like a team like Canada with one of the nicest human beings of Jason Zhao as their coach winning. Also a team like Sri Lanka with one of the other nicest human beings being Kithmina making it to the finals as well. Also probably worth mentioning, you know, that Sri Lanka are our sole siblings in having canceled the WSDCs. So we are even more appreciative and happy that for their friendship, for their understanding. And truthfully, I think in general, this community has meant so much to me. I'm so glad that Mexico and a bunch of people in our Oricon got to experience this similar, um, this similar level of love, friendship, and the benefits in the community. There's still so much left to do, but hopefully this is a good step forward. I'm tired. I don't really have much to say, so I think I will leave it there. Just thank you so much to everyone. Congrats to Team Canada. Congrats to all the participants. 
And thank you to everyone. Hope you've enjoyed this. We'll be posting a lot of things soon. We'll be posting the tab as soon as we can, all the videos. We'll be in contact with you again shortly, but very soon you'll never have to hear from me again. So congratulations on that as well. Hope everyone has a good evening and best of luck to you in your future debate endeavors. I will see some of you tomorrow judging euros. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. All right. Yeah. Year after year, the World Schools Debating Championship gathers the best debaters from around the globe. This year's pandemic made that impossible, so we took it online. In this style of debate, there are two teams, the proposition team, which is in favor of the motion, and the opposition team, which is against it. Each side features three speakers giving four speeches. The first two speakers generally present constructive argumentation. The third primarily focuses on refutation, while the reply speaker summarizes the debate. For the prepared rounds, teams research the motions for weeks in advance. For the impromptu rounds, teams have only one hour to prepare after being told the motion. <laughs>